how to become the best version of yourself, overcoming limiting beliefs of income, of knowledge, education, or your past. I uh, can't wait to go through this training with you to explain to you some of the things that I've used in my life to become the best version of myself. I know that you are a high achiever, but sometimes even high achievers, we deal with limiting beliefs, with mindsets that get in the way of our success and living the best version of ourselves, becoming the best version of ourselves. So in this training, I want to go through a few steps to help you with that. So I have some slides that I want to show you so that we can get into it right now. So let's get into it. First of all, I want to just tell you that becoming the best version of yourself is possible. No matter what you've been through, no matter how old or how young you are, becoming the best version of yourself is possible. The Bible says that all things are possible in Christ Jesus. All things are possible to those who believe. All we have to do is really believe. And we know that God wants to help us have a life that he's designed us to live, an abundant life, a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of gozo. Here's my gozo belt right there. So the first step is to eliminate limiting beliefs. Eliminating limiting beliefs means that you have to first be aware of the blocks to your success. Most people want to start with how to do, how do I become a millionaire or how do I find the woman or the man of my dreams? That's good and we'll get to that. But before you even look for those things, you have to understand what's keeping you and preventing you from uh, discovering your passion. Things such as fear, shame, anger, frustration, forgiveness. We have to learn how to move from these things into a life of joy, into a, a mindset that is rid of some of these things. Now, fear and shame, anger, frustration, forgiveness issues, all are examples of many people that I have coached through the years. And these are the things that usually limit people that I work with. It's not their skill, it's not their education, it's not even their financial uh, financial place right now. It's really It really comes down to these topics because these are the things that get in the way of you finding the best job or asking for a raise or you getting into the best shape of your life. Now, what we want to do with eliminating limited beliefs is to move from these things of fear and shame to joy, possibility, and courage. When you begin to examine your mind and to give God control over your thoughts and your feelings, then you will experience joy, possibility, and courage. You will begin to experience the kind of life you've always wanted to live. And that is a combination of coaching, of prayer, of trusting God, of people that can really support you, of you doing the things that are not easy, of you having the joy, the courage, and really the strength to persevere and to be honest about your your limiting beliefs. I think that sometimes we are afraid to, to discuss our issues of fear and anxiety and so forth because maybe if we are Christians, we think that we don't need counseling because I have Jesus. And some of these things are true at, 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 in many ways, but when you are wanting to lose weight, for example, and you go to the gym and you don't know exactly what to do or you feel lost with all of the different exercises or there's too many people or maybe you're sore and you, and you quit after a couple of days. It's good to have a coach. You wouldn't say, well, I don't need a coach. I have Jesus. I mean, that would be silly to say that. It's in, in many ways, it's the same thing when it comes to fear and limiting beliefs that we may have. You need Jesus for everything. Without him, we are nothing. But to have a coach, to have tools, to have people that can help you is very, very powerful. And it can speed up your process to get to this place of joy, possibility, and courage. Now, the second thing that I often uh, talk about is describing your ideal outcomes. When you get clear about what it is that you want, you can begin to really get that fire inside of you. There's nothing worse than to start a business or to change careers or to start dating just because you want to or just because you think you should. You really want to be clear on your outcomes. So for example, what's your ideal vacation? Is there something in your mind that, let's say right now we're in, in, in summer and you think, man, next summer, 
summer 2024 i do not want to just be home grinding working this dead end dead end nine to five that i can't stand without the ability to even take a week or two weeks off and just be on vacation maybe you uh, have a ministry goal you want to this summer not only go to a conference not only go to an event but to actually pay for somebody else and that comes down to income. And so you want to be clear on your ideal income. Do you want to make 10000 a month? Do you want to make 100000 a year? Do you want to make two fifty, a million dollars? Do you simply just want to get out of debt and stabilize your income? Do you just simply need a job? What is your ideal income? How many hours would you like to work? How, well, how far do you want to work? Do you want it to be a, a job that is that is more uh, than what you have now or something that's just about the same your ideal relationships obviously we're social beings god uh, has given us love and relationships and friends and church and ministry to socialize but maybe you are in a place where you're thinking i'm not really happy being alone or maybe you are happy with your boyfriend your girlfriend your wife your husband but there are some things to work on. What is that ideal relationship look like in terms of communication, in terms of your budget, in terms of the things that you do, in terms of your similar ministry goals, in terms of your prayer life, in terms of your Bible study life? Maybe you have someone that you're keeping an eye on, you're a young single man, young single woman, but maybe they're not, they're not, they're not talking to you, they're not interested in you. It's not reciprocated or you you went through a breakup, perhaps, and you're still reeling from that. You're not sure of yourself. Your relationship with God has suffered. You're feeling all kinds of things. What is the ideal relationship? Who would you want to marry if you could describe that person? You know, we all have a list, right? Kind of like a checklist. What does that checklist include? And then, of course, fitness. We all have fitness goals. We all want to lose weight. We want to gain weight. We want to gain more muscle. We want to work out more often, etc. Well, what does that picture look like? I, I often like to print things. For example, when it comes to income, I like to print certain ideals that I have on my wall or in my phone when it comes to vacation, when it comes to being maybe fl flying first class or buying a beach house. I like to print, or maybe if you're obviously younger, you might just simply want to store uh, pictures in your phone of your ideal relationship, not to be crazy about it and, and be materialistic or to think um, maybe too uh, about the things of this earth we're not talking about being materialistic we're talking about be being clear on your goals and, and remember to include ministry goals what would be the ideal relationship for you in terms of ministry a wife that can support you a husband that can lead you a children that can uh, serve next to you to be able to as i said to uh, give a scholarship to other people so they can go to a conference so they can go on a weekend retreat what are the goals that you have specifically if you are more of a big picture person write write them down specifically how much money how much income how many times a year would you like to go on a retreat or on a vacation or to help somebody else in need and then of course as i said what is your ideal weight are you at 140 and you want to be at 120 are you at 200 and you want to be at 180 what would that look like who could you partner with to make these things a reality number three i think this is very very powerful and this is now more personal more in your heart it's not just goals and all these things but it's more getting in touch here number three with a personal story that highlights your purpose get in touch with something real something emotional that highlights your purpose so for example uh, just uh, in terms of my life i want to be a coach i've always wanted to be a father figure to to young people first to our, our own children and by the grace of god that's something that i've been able to do for now 24 25 years but really this didn't start just uh, recently i've always wanted to be like my father and he was the ultimate mentor in my life really you could say that everything i do is to be like my father and maybe you can relate to this but i remember when we first got married rochelle and i in our first year we lived in a one-bedroom apartment here in long beach and my father was here i think it was just after the wedding that he stuck around or maybe he came back and I remember him making us breakfast. And remember, I'm from Nicaragua, so I, I hardly eat uh, Nicaraguan food. It's different than Mexican food, and so it's got its own flavors and such. But my dad, being uh, someone who loves me and Rochelle, we were just uh, married, 
He, I remember every morning I would smell the bacon and the eggs and all the, we call it fritangeria, basically fried everything. He would even fry, I think, uh, he would fry oil if he could. And, but that smell and those flavors are things that I grew up with when I was a little boy, when I was home with him and my mom. And, uh, and so him being in our apartment and cooking breakfast for us, cheese and eggs and tortillas and beans and gallo pinto, which is this rice and beans combo, and just getting up in the morning to do that for his son, who was, what, 26 at the time, so I wasn't like a little baby, and for my wife in a different country without the language, and he's not exactly a chef, you know, he just likes to make kind of his few little things was just a beautiful thing. And ever since that moment, and even many other moments, but that story touches me so much because that's really who I want to be. I want to be that man who serves other people, who makes breakfast, who makes food. I'm not much of a cook per se, but who serves other people selflessly, whatever they need, whether it's music or a teaching from the Bible or a coaching session or to record or to uh, go for a run, or to just simply talk on the phone. There's nothing that gives me more joy than to be like my father, to be a mentor to other people, because guess what? After that moment, I don't think I saw my dad many times after that until he passed away. And so in many ways, that was one of those few moments that I've had with my dad, especially as an adult, uh, where I could benefit from his love for me and, and really feel his love. And so that motivates me. So no matter what I go through, no matter what happens, I want to be like my father and love other people and, and help them out. And so for you, you want, to be able, you want to be able to go back in history or go back in time to your history to think about a moment like that. Is there a moment and experience with your father, with your mom, with a friend in your life, in ministry, maybe with God, maybe a word that you receive from the Lord? that exemplifies your purpose. It's not about what you should do or about your problems or even how much money or any of that stuff or even ministry, but it deals more with your heart, with who you are. Is there a time, a story when you were seen for who you really are, when you felt understood by God, by someone else that motivates you? I remember one of my clients, she talks about growing up and similar stuff with her parents. And I think that her mom needed help with some groceries and she went and helped her. And I don't know, picked up the bags and helped her. And I think she had maybe dropped a few of the grocery uh, bags. And so she was there as a young girl, maybe 11. And to this day now, she's an adult. She continues to be driven by that story of helping other people, helping women in her case to start businesses, to believe in themselves, to teach uh, young kids. She also loves education. And all of that passion, sometimes it gets lost. Sometimes we lose our way. But when we talk and, I, and I'm working with her, I remind her of that story of her picking up those grocery bags for her mom. And that immediately brings her back to her purpose. Because it's not just cognitive. It's not just up here in your head. It's in your heart. It reminds you of why you do what you do. And it gives you courage and strength for the next step. And then the last tip is design a career around your purpose, around that story. Obviously, we are here because we want to create a new life. We want to get rid of limiting beliefs. We want to be the high achiever, success people that God's created us to do. You know, God's given us all gifts. Well, at some point, you have to design a career around your purpose. It makes no sense if you're working at Starbucks, but your calling is to be a mentor. Or it doesn't make sense that you're maybe working construction or maybe you're working at Chick-fil-A when your purpose is to minister to women. Now, I don't mean that it's not okay or that it's not a part of the purpose. Of course, it, it is a part of the process. But my point is you don't want to get stuck there. You want to be clear on your purpose that comes from your heart, that comes from courage, it comes from above, and then design a career around that purpose. So, for example, you may want to start an online business around let's say in, in the case of my client, coaching um, moms, maybe helping moms with being overwhelmed. Maybe you start a coaching business like I've done and many people have done where you are coaching moms that feel overwhelmed. And kind of going back to that story of picking up grocery bags when your mom maybe needed help, now your purpose is to coach young moms that are struggling, feeling overwhelmed with young kids 
or maybe feeling overwhelmed with aging parents or feeling overwhelmed with so many ministry responsibilities. It could be that you say, you know, I need a new job. Like this job is no longer helping me. Yeah, it's maybe minimum wage and it's helping me with some bills, but it's not nowhere near in alignment with my purpose. I'm not meeting any anybody that's supporting my dreams. I'm not around any mentors that are really helping me. It's kind of a toxic environment, negative. It's exhausting. It's barely paying my bills. Maybe it's time for you to have or find a job or to pursue a job that is more in alignment with who you are. Education can be another thing. You might think, you know, I need to learn some more skills. I need to find a coach like myself or many others. I need to go online and find more people and tools that can guide me. I, I need help. I'm kind of lost. I'm kind of just floundering a bit or going all over the place. Or I'm kind of bored or stuck or I'm doing, making the same mistakes over and over again. Is there schooling that you need? Is there a certain workshop that you need to attend? And is there a ministry a weekend getaway that you need, a conference that you need to get you back on track and to actually find your way? And obviously for me, being a coach, it's what I love to do. This is why I'm here, quote, in business and in ministry, is to help you find your way. Because these things that I've mentioned are things that are super simple, but they're often hard to, to do because life and our minds and discouragement or exhaustion or we have so much going on that we don't even have time to think about things we just barely get on our on our phones and try to just numb ourselves with watching a bunch of funny videos and stuff but we don't have anybody that's speaking life into us you know just on a personal level i've been thinking a lot about my own coaching i have a coach but i think i need to spend more time with a coach myself because it happens to all of us where we know where we're going, but we need a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of guidance. And that's really what I love to do to people that come to me, that call me, that reach out, that say, hey, Trey, can you help me out in this area? Relationship, business, whether it's mindset, fear, whether it's career goals, a lot of relationship topics that I work with, with young people, with uh, people of all ages, high achievers especially, that really want to eliminate those limiting beliefs so they can be the best version of themselves and serve God and accomplish their dreams no matter what. And so if you are a high achiever and are ready to overcome these limiting beliefs, I offer a summer coaching mastermind. Basically, it's just a, a program where we talk one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes we get in groups and we uh, work on these things. I have about four or five slots available this summer. They're brand new slots that I am making available to you. You can just go to that website, davidtrader.com slash coaching, or just message me on whatever platform you're watching me or you're listening. And you can DM me. You can follow me on Instagram at David Trigg. You can message me on Messenger, Facebook Messenger. You can text me. You can email me, Trigg at davidtrigg.com. Go to the website. I actually have a calendar there that you can register. You can pick a time and a date. We can do it one-on-one. -on -one. We can do it on Zoom. We can do it in person. We can do it um, mess FaceTime. Here's the thing. I have found a true calling in helping people, especially high achievers, to overcome their limiting beliefs. It's my story. It's what I do daily. I coach myself. I have people that coach me. I've had uh, all kinds of uh, guides and mentors and therapists and counselors that have helped me. And this is not therapy or, or counseling per se. This is coaching, which is more forward thinking. It's more of consulting. It's more of helping you move forward, not so much looking back. And I think that's very important. And this is different, as I said, than going to church. Of course, I love church and Jesus is all we need. And I put a quote uh, recently on my Instagram. that said, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need uh, counseling. I have Jesus. And I made that really bold. But then in small letters, I put in other lies we tell ourselves. And it's not that I don't believe that Jesus can heal and, and overcome all of our concerns. Of course he is able. But as I said with, with physical training, why would we say, oh, I don't need a physical trainer. I have Jesus. Or, oh, why do I need to watch nutrition videos? I have Jesus. Well, these are the same kind of things. We need sometimes someone, a human being that we can relate to, that can love us, that can speak to us with kindness, with wisdom, with patience, with, with knowledge and to guide us and and this is what i love to do as i said i've really discovered a true gift and a passion for coaching and, and for of course i love worship and teaching and discipleship in many ways this is just discipleship but it's more intentional more 
uh, more direct, more, as I said, forward thinking. It's, it includes, of course, the Bible, the Bible. We pray, we quote verses. We, I'm a pastor at the end of the day, and so this is my, my ministry just in a different way. And, of course, uh, as I said, I believe that we need Jesus for everything. And he's the one that's motivated me to do this. He's the one that's guided me and gifted me. And most of all, I have many people that have, have experienced this coaching and, and say to me, uh, David, thank you. Thank you for uh, saving my life. Thank you for speaking truth. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for helping me with that relationship, with that job issue, with trust issues, with forgiveness issues with shame issues, with anxiety, with fear. And, and I am certified as a life coach. I'm certified also as a mental health advocate. And of course, I have a master's degree and bachelor's degree. I'm a licensed pastor. So it, it's not something that I'm just kind of, okay, let's see what I come up with. It's, it comes from a lot of prayer, patience, love, experience, training, education. And as I said, really a, a heart to help people. Really, at the end of the day, I'm just being like my father, just making breakfast for people for my family. It's just I'm doing it in a different way through these uh, particular tools. So if you would like to be a part of any of these opportunities, as I said, you can message me, you can co- you can send me a DM, you can message me, you can email me, etc. I would love to be of service to you. So that's basically the end of this particular training. I hope that it's been helpful to you and that you've learned a few things and kind of what it is that we need to do in order to become the best version of ourselves. And I think the summer is a great time to focus. Maybe you're at a conference right now, you're taking some time away, you're, maybe you're just grinding nine to five and trying to spend some time with your friends at night and the weekends. Maybe carve an hour a week, maybe two hours a week. I recommend that you get on a 12 week, twice a week program with me. That really is the most successful thing that I've noticed. Twice a week for 12 weeks, only 24 meetings. It is powerful. We go through things like this. We spend time one-on-one. Imagine you sitting with me one-on-one with tools like this, like these slides, and you uh, telling me what you need and and designing for me to design a, a coaching time that's specific to you that is specific to what you want. We literally have sheets, if you're into PDFs and things, where you write out your goals. I want to lose weight. I want to become a better uh, employee. I want to minister. I want to learn how to not let uh, relationship issues uh, bother me. I want to learn how to overcome fear. I want to learn to overcome my trust issues or forgiveness issues that I may have, or my anger and frustration with past work things or church things, or maybe Uh, There's a lot of shame in your heart related to a lot of these things. Maybe if you are married, you're having some issues at home. Uh, I don't just simply give you a bunch of books and just say, hey, watch this video. I actually design my talks and our time together prayerfully for what you need. And that's why it's effective. So as I said, twice a week, 12 months, excuse me, 12 weeks, twice a week, 24 sessions is what I recommend. That's the entry level. And we can go from there. We can go to we can go to uh, 24 weeks, 36 weeks. We can go to even a whole year meeting maybe once a week. Or if you, as I said, if you are up to it, to do it twice a week, which is what I recommend the most. So thank you again. I hope this training has helped. Make sure that you share this with your friends. Thank you. And I'll be and thank you for being here. And I will see you next time. Adios.